Hello, my name is Wade Demura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Um, recently, we've been seeing a lot of work and construction going on in the Carpenter area, and part of that has to do with the Habitat for Humanity build. With me today, I have two members of the Santa Barbara Rotaract Club. I have uh, Boris. I'm going to start with you first. Boris Gozowski is the president, current president of the Santa Barbara Rotaract, and Ashlyn Cavaletto, uh, vice president, I believe, correct? Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to start with you, Boris, because we've had you on here before. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So I was born in Russia, I grew up in Israel, and I moved to Santa Barbara about two years ago. And I started to uh, work as a plumber, and which segues to the projects we have done. We'll talk about it. Sounds good. Very good. Ashton, how about you? Uh, I grew up in the Central Valley of California. I came out here in 2011 for college, and my husband's family lived here, so we've stayed out here, and I now work with a nonprofit, um, All for Animals, and we use therapy dogs with kids. So. Nice. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, you said you work as a nonprofit for animals? Yeah. Um, so I'm a program director for All for Animals. We're a nonprofit in Santa Barbara. We've been here for 21 years. And we have a program called ARF, called Animals Plus Reading Equals Fun, that we're actually going to uh -huh. kick off um, in mid September. And we go into the different elementary schools in Santa Barbara, and we work with students who are struggling to become readers okay. with our therapy dogs. Perfect. So tell us a little bit about your uh, Rotaract career. How did you get involved with that? Did they find you, or did you uh, look for them? Um, well, when I came here for school, it was, it was kind of hard to become part of the community. A lot of, especially the college scene, they're kind of just focused on that. And so when I started working, I was really looking for a, people who were like me, who had grown up um, giving back to their community. I was in 4-H and FFA, so it was very important for me to find a group like that. And so when I heard about Rotaract, it was just a natural fit. Perfect. Sounds good. How about you, Boris? Well, when I came here uh, to Santa Barbara, I, was, I couldn't work, and I looked where I could volunteer, and I found Rotary, and through Rotary I found Rotaract. And I really enjoyed the, the volunteering opportunities, and I keep on going with it. Sounds good. Now, you're one of the few we had on the last show that actually has dual membership. You're in Rotary and in Rotaract, correct? That is correct. Uh, I'm not a dual member right okay. now. I'm a liaison for the Sunrise Club. Okay. Uh, maybe in the future, I will now we'll focus on uh, being a president of the club. Sounds good. How much work is that? It's a lot, uh, <laughs> but I'm handling it, so it's so far so good. Very good. And member-wise, how many members do you have in the club? Right now, we're at about 20. Okay. And well, uh, we, have, we have quite a few interested, so we'll see how it grows. Okay. Let's uh, start talking about this uh, habitat. Uh, how were you approached on that one, and how did you find out about the project Habitat for Humanity? So first I heard about them at work when I was uh, working, and I still am working with them uh, in my plumbing career. Uh, one of the jobs is with them, and I decided if Habitat for Humanity, a nonprofit organization that helps build houses for people in need, if we're helping them uh, working, I could help them with volunteers because of my uh, affiliation with uh, Rotaract. And so I talked to uh, Ben, the guy that runs this uh, project. It, uh, it's a three unit project for uh, three families. And I decided to, why not get members from Rotaract and uh, ask them if there, if there will be, there will be any interest about uh, construction work or any you know, volunteer uh, and help them with it. And they were really excited and looking forward into uh, a project like that. And I approached Ben, telling him that I have uh, quite a few volunteers to help with uh, the build. And we made that work. And we are really happy with the results. Many, many people attended. We had 40 hours of uh, volunteer work crammed in such a short time. I'm really happy with the result, and uh, members are as well. So you contract, as a contractor, are you doing the plumbing for uh, the construction there? Was that how you got involved first? Yes, at first, uh, at first I was. I was just doing my regular job, and then I realized where I'm working. In the beginning, it was just another project, but right, then I'm right. realizing, hey, there's a lot of Habitat for Humanity people here. And then I saw that the contractor is Habitat for Humanity guy in himself, in okay. himself. so okay. then I made the connection and uh, actually brought it to uh, to actually fruition to make it happen. Good. And of your members, how many of them actually um, work with you on the project or have worked with you on the project? 50%, maybe 10? Of the members from Rotaract? Yeah. 
50%. Uh, About 50%. Yeah. On a Saturday morning mm -hmm. to bring, uh, yeah, to bring people, it's uh, quite a, not the easiest, especially it's not in town. You have to drive there. Um, True, because so. uh, this one here is in Carpinteria, so you got a little ways to go on yeah. a weekend too. On a weekend, yeah. Yeah. So um, being a contractor, actually being a plumbing contractor, have you done like all of the phases? Because it's not all plumbing. Uh, yes, it's, uh, so if we're talking about all phases, I have done all phases in the past. I did most of the construction fields and then I ended up being a plumber. Um, and within plumbing, there is the rough, in the, the rough plumbing in the beginning. Right. So we started on this project when it was a dirt patch. Mm -hmm. uh, and to this day, we're still working on the finish of the shower. Wow. So. It's an ongoing uh, project. And Ashton, how about you? How much construction background do you have? <laughs> uh, definitely not as much as Boris, <laughs> um, but I did grow up on a farm, so I knew about That's tools, true. and my husband um, works carpentry and framing. Oh, so he's okay. actually one of the guys that were, came to this project with us and nice. one of our other members okay. who has similar experience. So it's really great because for those of us who aren't in construction, you know, we did have enough skills to really contribute, but then we were also able to bring quite a few people with skilled labor to the project. Got it. So you don't have to be skilled. You can always find a job there with the Habitat people. Oh, yeah. We were able to do quite a lot. We were very busy for the four hours we were there. So, so you've done how many shifts then? One time, or have you been there a few times? Um, I was just there once, okay. um, but I know this project is ongoing, so yeah. we'll see what we can do. Sounds good. How about you there, Boris? When you've been, well, you're contracting yeah. also, but yeah. as far as volunteering out? Well, it's the first time we volunteered with them, okay. but since it had a very positive impact on both sides, good. I think we will absolutely do uh, more projects with them. Sounds good. Let's jump into the pictures, uh, since we have a few photos here of the project itself. Starting with the first photo, um, that one shows um, your group, I guess, uh, starting out with, one, with that one day worth of build, correct? And uh, you want to give us uh, names if you could identify some of those people. So we're talking about from the left we have uh, is it Jake. Yep, that's it's Jake. Uh, it's Ashlyn's husband. Okay. Then there's uh, me. Okay. And uh, there's Kelsey, my wife. Okay. Good. There's uh, Betsy. Okay. A member from the club. She's mm -hmm. actually the secretary. Okay. We have Ashlyn. Uh -huh. We have Al. Uh, Al is uh, my co-president okay. in the club, and uh, he is Betsy's husband. Okay. And we have Parker Sampanis, which is the treasurer this year. Good. And we have a few members that went home or weren't in the picture. <laughs> we have a few uh, more of them working, I believe. So yeah, but we, we have them on the rest of the photos, them. probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is a before picture. This is when you guys are just getting there, getting organized. Yeah, it's one of those. And yeah. I would guess you probably get orders and direction at that point in time. Uh, yeah, we have a big circle that Ben okay. arranges and talks to everyone about it. And how many were there that one day for that build? Do you remember? Um, about it was 10, 15, about 17 to 20 people okay. working, including the homeowners. Yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. I don't think the audience is aware that the homeowners have to put some time in there. Yes, the homeowners have to put some time into getting, before they're getting to the houses that are built. In the beginning, they don't know what, which house is theirs, and uh, later in the, actually a month ago, they only got the assigned home that they're getting. Now, two, uh, two of the families helped us there on that day, mm -hmm. but there's another uh, family that wasn't there, but is there on the, on the weekdays, I can tell you okay. for sure because when I'm there, he's uh, oh, they're making that. sure that everything is good and good. Yeah, so uh, the families are helping. They're putting a lot of time into uh, building these. So they do houses. basically the sweat equity portion of that. So not only are they getting the house, but they're earning it. They are earning it. Yeah, yeah. it's good. a lot of work. That is good. Okay, the next picture we have is a picture of um, looks like somebody taping down. You have. Uh, that's actually me. Um, so <laughs> so okay. that house is, um, they have wrapping on them, mm -hmm. and a lot of the house on the sides, it was too long for what they were going to do. So during part of the project, we went around and cut that shorter for okay. them because um, okay. you would see that later on in the project. Mm -hmm. So um, how many people were helping you out with that? Was that just your one job? Um, a couple of us girls were doing it, uh, the ones that didn't want to be up on the okay. rafting. So <laughs> we took care of the bottom floors. <laughs> Got it. Okay. And people with good knees, I see. Mm -hmm. The young people with the good backs and knees. <laughs> good. And um, 
Did they give you instruction, direction on what you were going to do and how you're going to do that? Yeah, yeah. They had a, a lot of instruction every step of the way, um, and they were coming around making sure that we were okay. So yeah, we, we felt confident in what we were doing, oh, good, which is good. good. Now, Ben is the general contractor and also project manager. Was he on site then for that day also? Yes, he was. He gave us uh, basic directions. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Good, good. Next picture we have is a, a ladder picture, somebody working actually up on the ladder or getting ready to go up the ladder. Um, so tell us a little bit about that one. Do you recognize any people in there? So we have Al working there and uh, Betsy below him, okay. probably handing him uh, tape mm -hmm. to finish taping on the top there. So as Ashton said before, uh, some people worked on the top floors, walking mm -hmm. on ladders, more uh, confident people that are more stable. Mm -hmm. um, action people. Actually, uh, Parker from our club and uh, Jake, uh, Ashlyn's husband, were running on top, going on the roof for more stuff. <laughs> uh, and yeah, people that feel comfortable. Again, it's for people that are experienced and some which are not experienced. So uh, Jake and uh, Parker are experienced and are comfortable, so they went up there. I was there with them a little bit too. And people that are less experienced or just want the ground jobs, they got to do that. that. Sounds good. And you said Jake is actually a contractor anyways. He's in construction, so he's probably used to jumping around up there doing that. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the next picture we have is a picture of, looks like the scaffolding set in place and some people working at the, uh, at the peak of it. So that's actually, a, looks like uh, it's about as high as you're going to get. Yeah, and that's the homeowners. Uh, yeah. Looks the like homeowners it. are there climbing on top. Yeah. Good, good. So they get involved and they will, I guess they've been on the job just about every week. So they're probably comfortable used to being up in the higher spots. Yeah. And of those, do they bring in friends, families, or, is, or are those actually the homeowners? Do you know? These are the homeowners. Okay. And the homeowners are bringing their families okay. to help them. Nice. They're okay. having good social time and also they get to uh, put some work in. Okay. Yeah. Good, helping. good. Uh, next picture we have is a picture of um, some people taping off a window, it looks like there. Yep, uh, so that's me on the left, and then Kelsey Boris's wife is helping me. Um, okay. She's up on the ladder because she's much taller than me. I couldn't get to the top <laughs> of the window. She's the picture, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't get to the top of the window even with the ladder. So. Um, but yeah, we were weatherproofing all the windows um, okay. for the next stage of the project. So that nice. was a big portion of what we did. Good. So timing's good. Here we are getting close to uh, winter time, so mm -hmm. you're going to have that thing all weathered out. That'd be nice. And how many windows did you figure you had to do that day? Oh, gosh. <laughs> did you have to do them all? I, we did all the windows. Did you really? um, And all three units? Mm -hmm. wow. Yes. Wow. Wow, well, that's yeah. good. And so now you're experienced. You know how to do that. Oh, yeah. I'm perfect with the tape. <laughs> good. <laughs> Very good. Next picture we have is an inside picture. Um, mm -hmm. Boris, tell us a little bit yeah. about that one, because I'm sure you're aware of for me with the insides. Yes. So uh, we see Ben, the contractor, uh, pointing out uh, the next job to Parker on the left mm -hmm. and Jake on the right. And that's the venting for the shower. And the next thing that uh, Parker and Jake did is drilling holes for the, for the venting. So that's uh, quite strenuous work that only experienced uh, people would do. And they did a really good job at it. Okay. Yeah. So I guess Ben was pretty happy that he had experienced people working with him on this job. Yeah, that was... We got a uh, lot more job work done then that way. Yeah, yeah much yeah. more than expected, actually. Very good. And then uh, another picture we have coming up here is a picture... Uh, was that middle, middle of the work, wind-down part? That was uh, quite the middle. Okay. We have uh, myself on the left. We have uh, Sandy Schwartz, the district governor of 5240. Mm -hmm. We have... Uh, it's Betsy in the middle, showing the muscles, and Al, her husband, on the right. And then we have Ben, the contractor, and uh, Ashlyn. Okay, great, great. So uh, Sandy, uh, district governor, comes actually from Bakersfield, so she came and met you at this job. All the way from Bakersfield, and she is a district governor that likes to get her hands dirty to get the job done. She, she does. Yeah. She you, wasn't bossing around too much, was she? She was, she was doing a great job, great job. Okay, don't want to put you on the spot, but she'll probably be watching the show. <laughs> Maybe. Good answer, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so she was around for a while. Did she, um, 
get involved with most of the construction part of it? Yes, she, she was. She was uh, taping, especially the higher parts, because she is blessed with being tall. She's pretty tall, right? <laughs> Stands tall. And by the way, she's a nurse, so I guess the taping part would fit for that, too. That's right. <laughs> and if anyone gets a cut, she's there. Yeah, uh, that's true. Very luckily, good. no one did. That's good. Very good. And um, at that same day, we actually had a, a party going at noontime. So you guys are wrapped up by noontime, I guess. That's right. And so the next picture here is uh, you and Scott. We'll call him Scott Phillips, who is, uh, he's actually COO this year, Chief Operating Officer for the district. Yeah. And uh, so you guys are having a good time there yeah. at the party. Scott is a good friend outside. And uh, we went to the coronation day of uh, Carpinteria Clubs. We had a nice barbecue and uh, yeah, good time out. <laughs> That was good. So that was part of the, um, well, actually it was a work day, so you got a little break from work. Yeah. To finish that up. Now you guys did worked until noontime, right? Correct? Or? Yeah, we worked there uh, in Habitat for about until okay. noontime. Now was Starting. there another shift that came in after you, do you know? Or? That day, no. That day they, uh, Just a quiet day. they called it a day. Oh, okay. About oh good. good. Yeah. Looked like they were pretty well caught up with most of the work. Yeah. He's coming along quickly. Now, did Ben tell you the deadlines? How are they doing on the timing of that? Or? Yeah, they expected to uh, start the school year, which is September, uh, with the houses finished. But every contractor knows that uh, the deadline that is expected is uh, in dream world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it's expected to be done in the next few months, maybe Good. November or wow, so. Wow, nice. Yeah. So at the end of the year, then, these people will be able to move in. By the end of the year, maybe Thanksgiving, wow. it will be done. Oh, that would be very nice. Yeah. Perfect. Now, we have another um, announcement here. There's a poster that I found online that I wanted to <laughs> talk to you guys about. You guys could tell us a little bit about the uh, activities that you do as uh, Rotaract clubs. Are you talking about the Pearls, Introduction to Rotaract? That would be one of them. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We have a great speaker there. It's uh, <laughs> Wade Namora. <laughs> Thank you. He's going to tell us about uh, Pearls. It's uh, Practical, Relevant Leadership Skills, and it's Introduction to Rotary. It's a great place for Rotarians and uh, Rotaractors and even Interactors to come together, listen to what Rotary is and uh, what Rotary does and how you can contribute as a member um, and it's happening today, and we have a lot of uh, members and people coming to listen to that talk. Right. And hopefully it will uh, give us all better education about what Rotary is, does, and uh, how we can contribute more. Now, you were fairly new when you took the classes then, so you must have got a lot of uh, benefit from that, understanding the organization better. Yes, yeah. Um, Good. yeah. For yeah. me, it was a big thing, and uh, even... Rotarians that have been in Rotary for a long time, many times we get to uh, forget why we're here, what, mm -hmm. are, what we're doing. Right. And it's a nice anchor to put it down and uh, tell us this is what Rotary is, that's how it started, and this is the mission. Okay. And okay. I think it's a great thing uh, that we get to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, as president, you started this year, was this year, you started in July. That's right. Same as Rotary does. What was your goals, your objectives as president for Rotaract that you want to accomplish or achieve? My goals are to take all the members from Rotaract and use their skills to help others, such as construction, help the construction in construction. I believe that every person can help in their field, and uh, that's what I'm trying to improve and also to connect Rotaractors with Rotarians from that field, from their same field, to make them better professionals and learn from uh, re retired people and from people with experience and to create a better, you know, better giving and better receiving, better for the member and better for the community. Right. Oh, that's very good. That's a good goal, good objective to have. Now, how about you? Have you made plans for next year yet for you? Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> I've been learning definitely from Boris. Okay. Um, but I think especially what he's talking about, um, connecting members, um, not only like professional skills, but also just um, in our projects. I think one of the great things about Rotaract and Rotary is we get to work with a diver diversity of causes. But with that, you know, some are more interesting than others to our members. So really tapping into that and finding the projects like Habitat for Humanity that really drive our members and give them passion to give back to the community. That's what we're really doing. Good, good. Now, uh, working with Habitat, you think that's going to be something you're going to continue with? I certainly hope that we do. I think um, 
a lot of the projects we do are one-time events and we don't really get to see the true impact that we're having and this project in particular was very special because um, we get to see our members really engage but also meet the families and understand true. the impact that we're giving to them and right. that that was incredible for all of us and we were all talking about it you know mm. days weeks later so it's definitely something that we should continue very good now they also at the end of each of these habitat builds will have a groundbreaking and uh, special mm -hmm. event you should be invited to that one so it's kind of pretty special it was a really nice job that they do with that uh, i certainly hope so that'd be great yeah. to go to oh, yeah stay in yeah. touch with them now what other projects have you looked at um, for your club to get involved with uh, well, we have our stable projects we work with um, the Pride Prom, um, we just did Flower Empire, which um, brings joy to families who are going through difficult medical situations. Mm. Um, but we've also recently surveyed our members for what they're interested in. So we had a lot of interest in disaster preparedness, um, helping the elderly, um, and pretty much across the board. So we're really taking that survey and trying to figure out where we can capitalize with our members. Got it, good. Now how about um, reaching out to the community? And when I say that, Challenges that Rotary has is that Rotary, it's kind of shrinking. They don't have a lot of new members coming in. Have you addressed that with your club, looking at maybe recruiting new people into it? Well, I think especially for Rotaract, we get a lot of our members through word of mouth. Um, Santa Barbara is very unique in that most of the people our age are college age. They're kind of in a different type yeah. of community than the working professionals. Right. So I think a lot of people that we get coming into our program are people that we're working with every day and just talking about it. I know every time I meet someone our age that has you know, the same values as us, um, really the drive to give back and become part of a true community, the first thing I think of is Rotaract. And after maybe two minutes, they're already asking me, where can I go? Oh, wow. How do we go? So um, I think our best um, marketing strategy is word of mouth and just sharing our personal stories. And it makes people want to become part of it. What we're now doing. you also have a website, right? That you guys uh, yeah. established, yeah. keep developed, and yes, yeah. it's uh, sbrotoract.org, mm -hmm. and uh, we up, we're updating about the events that are coming up, and we post the photos so you can see all the photos that are here in the website, and uh, yeah, more to come. And so tell us uh, for the audience, what is the age group that you could fit into? Um, are there any restrictions? Usually like it's uh, 18 to 30, okay. but we're uh, flexible toward the 30. We won't ban you if you're 30. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, and we can talk about how to uh, join Rotary and also how to transition from Rotary to uh, some from Rotaract to Rotary. Okay. Uh, and that's a transition that Rotary is uh, seeking to uh, do more, and we're helping with it. Okay. And um, where do you meet, and how often? Uh, so we meet usually uh, professionals that are that want to speak, uh, and people from the community that are uh, running projects and such. We meet at a brewery sometimes, and sometimes we are the grass patch outside of the mission of Santa Barbara. And how often is uh, twice a month, okay. every second and fourth Tuesday at uh, six fifteen p.m. Oh, nice. Oh, very good. And outsiders, or I would say not outsiders, but those people that come that are not members, you said you roughly have about 20, so what's the average attendance for those meetings? Average attendance of meeting is yeah. uh, around 15 to 20. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. oh, very yeah. good. Familiar faces, mostly? Mostly, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then for your leadership development, just curious, um, you have a president, you have the president-elect, basically a vice mm -hmm. president. Do you have another line beyond that? Is it like a three-year transition of leadership or two-year development? Right now it's on three. Good. Uh, Good. We're trying to make it three um, because there's a, one of the problems that I found in uh, college and university-based uh, Rotaract is that there's one term or two terms that are accounted for and then if one per it takes only one board to forget about it and they graduate and the club collapses. True. So I'm trying to prevent that and we're trying to do a mutual effort to keep the club running and uh, even if uh, a member leaves town or uh, anything happens, the club will be uh, self-sustaining. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, that's good. And there is also a uh, UCSB road rack also, right? That College is true. Based. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're working with them. Oh, good, good. And uh, what kind of projects do you do with them or events? 
So most of the projects that we're doing uh, right now are uh, we con we consider them uh, with us. We are asking if they want to volunteer with us. We have extra. We ha they have about thirty members to this uh, day. I know that uh, they're starting a new school year now, so it's going to change both sides. I don't know if more or fewer. And uh, they didn't present any projects yet because they're still in their summer break. Right, right. Okay. And do you have plans for your year to actually doing maybe joint events with them? Oh, absolutely. I think, um, like you said, because of the way UCSB runs, they're kind of on a more restricted schedule. So it's always great when we can pull them in or because they have shorter time planning their projects, we are more than willing to help them any way we can. Nice. Um, it's not so much two different clubs, it's just how can we support each other. Sounds good. Now, have you ever thought about, just as a thought, um, as they come back to school, having maybe a, a dual club uh, event, something like that, where you could welcome them back? Um, I know Boris is more in contact with them than I am, so I'm not sure what we're doing, but that's definitely something that our leadership would be interested okay. in doing for them. Good. And as far as looking at other projects, things that you could reach out to, what is your primary source? Do you, is it just word of mouth, or do you have people out there looking for things that you could do? Uh, it's a little bit of both. Um, so, for example, in my work at the nonprofit, I'm go uh, we're going to a um, adoption fair soon. So I reached out to them and said, hey, I'm part of Rotaract. I'm going to be at the event with my work, but we do have people available if you need help. But also people reach out to us all the time. And they, they hear about us from other events or just events we've done in the past, and just, they just want us to keep coming back. So it's, it's a little bit of both, and we try to do as much as we can. Good. Good. And how about Rotary Clubs then? Do they oftentimes approach you for assistance? Yeah, many of their events, definitely. Yeah. Just recently, we had a 4th of July uh, party that uh, was f with fireworks in Goleta, and they reached out to us, and we had quite a few volunteers helping there. Good. Oh, that is good. And um, with those, uh, and as you work with them, do you see members transitioning into Rotary? We do. Actually, we had uh, three in the past year, and we have two more that are uh, going to make the transition as we speak. Very good. Well, for the two of you, thank you very much for joining us. I sure appreciate it and sharing the experience. Um, we look forward to working with you a lot more in the future. And with that, everybody uh, if in the audience there, take a look at the Santa Barbara Rotaract Clubs and the other Rotaract Clubs because they are the ones doing a lot of the work. They will be the future of Rotary, and we want to make sure that they're given all those opportunities. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.